Okay, I normally don't do those kinds of videos, but I just have to show you the new stuff I got. Um, today I was at a guy's house whose father sadly passed away and his father was a a chemist, but he had all kinds of um, interests and he built electronic stuff and uh, had a lot of chemicals. It, 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 you won't believe what that house looked like inside. He, they, it's like a treasure chest for people who love this stuff. And the person that um, contacted me had the problem that he had to get rid of the chemicals and he said that if uh, Elias and I take the chemicals he will make a very good price for us um, regarding the other equipment. Um, so we got there and there were very interesting chemicals there and we took them but since I can't really work with chemicals at my location um, I was more interested in the equipment and I just thought I would show you today the equipment I got and maybe you have some great ideas what to do with it. The first stuff you see is right here. It is a huge gas discharge tube and you can use your own gas to um, fill it up so you can test the gas discharge in oxygen, hydrogen, neon, argon, whatever gas you want. And I also got this high voltage power supply and the father of this guy built a lot of this stuff himself. This is also homemade and you can see the laugh that went into this equipment. Uh, seriously, it warms my heart to see something like this. It's just made so lovely. He also built some feet for it and they're made out of wood. It's, it just shows how much passion somebody can have for a hobby like this. And yeah, I love to see stuff like that. He had so much equipment. I didn't even know what 60% of that equipment was meant for because it was mostly electronic stuff. And that's not really my um, area. So yeah, it, 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 was, it was a great experience. I just wanted to show you this detail. I, I noticed it when I um, cleaned it up a little bit. And yeah, I, just thinking about that he took his time to cut these wood pieces and fit them there. And, and this case here seems to be brushed. So he took his time to brush it. It's, yeah, I just love this, this kind of stuff. And I also got this huge lab stand where you can mount um, the gas discharge tube to. There are also these um, high voltage standoffs here with um, isolators so it won't um, arc to the, to the lab stand. Yeah, that's the first main thing I got. I also got these feet here. This is a feed. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what everything here is. This seems to be a vacuum valve of some sorts. Um, I'm not exactly sure. A needle valve. I have to go through all of it and uh, yeah, see what everything is used for. But these feet um, will also be very useful for, for high voltage um, experiments. I also got um, this piece here. It is used to dry um, gases. This is nitrogen and this means air in English. And here you can also see that it's homemade. He drilled these aluminum plates himself. He mounted it to this lab stand. He fitted those um, pressure release valves here. He marked them with the pressure they act on. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry if you think this video is boring, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you this because I think it's great that those kind of people exist. This is the next thing. It's a vacuum chamber with this glass bell jar. And the great thing is that it has vacuum feed-throughs, several of them. And you can connect um, your cables right here. And as you can see, if we look at the bottom, that these um, cables go to the feed-throughs. And we also have, of course, the piece for the vacuum to attach to, the vacuum hose. And we have a line where we can again attach a gas uh, hose to and adjust the flow rate through this needle valve here. And I'm not sure, it looks homemade, 
I, I absolutely um, think he could have made it himself. I'm not sure. Possible. Yeah, but we can do a lot of great stuff in this small vacuum chamber here. If you have any ideas what you want to see with this equipment, uh, let me know and I will try to make it happen. I also got several gas bottles. This is nitrogen 5.0. Here you can see helium 4.6. And I can use these gases to, for example, supply my gas discharge tube. I also got some hydrogen 5.0 and um, some oxygen and the pressure regulator. And I also have this bottle here <laughs> that's not labeled. I have no idea what's in it. I guess it's oxygen. All of those are oxygen bottles um, that have been repurposed to be filled with the other gases. So I guess since there's no label on this that this is also oxygen. But I will test it. Maybe I will test it by looking at the color of the gas discharge. It will tell us a lot. And maybe we'll do a, a flame test to see if it's hydrogen or oxygen. Yeah, and if it suffocates the flame, it is probably nitrogen, argon, or something along those lines. One of the biggest treasures I found was this turbo molecular pump. And I've never seen a turbo molecular pump this tiny. <laughs> I think it's almost cute. But it's great since I don't have that much, much, much space. Um, and yeah, I have not tested any of the equipment yet besides the gas discharge tube. And I will see if I can get it to run, but the way all the equipment looked, it looked like he took great care of it. All of the vacuum ports have been covered with aluminum foil. And of course, I also got the um, controller for the turbo molecular pump, since without the controller, those pumps are basically worthless. And yeah, this, that's probably uh, the most awesome find because, yeah, I mean, it's a turbo molecular pump. I wanted one for a long time. Um, I mean, look at the size of this and the size of only, of only the compressor of my cryo pump. So, yeah, it's a huge difference. I also got several of those stainless steel vacuum hoses. They're also great. And there's another um, piece a tube that was used to dry gases. And I have a flow meter right here, an, anal an analog one. And yeah, this here is also um, a needle valve that was used to control the flow of gases inside the gas discharge tube. Besides that, I got a low pressure sodium vapor lamp. I will use it to make the black flame um, experiment or demonstration. And I also got a xenon lamp. This here is another awesome piece of equipment. It is a ionization vacuum gauge. Those gauges are made for really low um, pressures. And since <laughs> those gauges are worthless without a controller, I also have the um, appropriate um, controller for the ionization gauge, so yeah. And, and the equipment looks, yeah, it looks well taken care of. Another piece of equipment I thought was very interesting is this um, pump here. I don't know if you know what it is, but it is a diffusion vacuum pump. And... I may make a video about how these work, but there's a lot of information on the internet. And he has different stacks for it. Those Christmas trees, how they are also called. Where the oil deflects and is um, deflected downwards. He has a second one down there. And not only that, he also has those water-cooled baffles here. They mount um, on top of the diffusion pump and prevent any oil vapors to contaminate your vacuum by condensing them. There is currently no heater on this pump, but there is a heater right here. 
I have to check it if it's still working. And yeah, everything you need is right here. So I just need a way to attach the flange. But it seems like, yeah, great. There's a KF flange here to attach the diffusion pump to a KF fitting. And he also documented, that's another thing, the, the work he put into this, he documented what the um, pump needs. So the end pressure, um, how much oil it needs, um, how much flow of cooling water, the time it takes to heat the pump up. Um, yeah, it's just lovely. This here is another pressure gauge. It is meant for, yeah, it's not for high vacuum applications, but it's still great to have. I think it's a, what are those called? Um, is it written on here? No, I'm not sure what they're called. Um, but yeah, it's another vacuum gauge. Um, yeah, it goes to 0 0.001 millibars. So it's not for high vacuum applications, but still very useful. And another vacuum gauge I got. This is a Pirani gauge. I have the controller right here. I love these old analog um, displays. And the gauge is right here. This is the Pirani gauge itself. I finally also got an oil mist filter for my vacuum pump. The one I was using before was this one here and I didn't have um, the housing for it. So I just 3D printed a piece that holds onto it. It worked, but it didn't work great because it wasn't uh, absolutely tight and there was uh, yeah, oil mist leaking out of it. So I hope it gets a lot better with this one. I still have to figure out how to fit it because with my gauge here it doesn't fit perfectly. So maybe I need a... A, a 90 degree angle and mount it like that. Yeah, we, we will see, but I have an oil mist filter and these are very expensive too if you buy them. Um, otherwise, I would have also gotten one a long time ago. And I also got a lot of um, smaller vacuum pieces, all of those KF clamps, some, this is a high vacuum valve, and just some T pieces, um, yeah, just some vacuum parts. Yeah, this is just a video I wanted to make to show you all of the stuff I got because I was so stoked about it. And if you have any ideas what you want me to do with that and have any ideas for videos with it, um, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you a lot for watching. And uh, thank you to the person who gave them to us for a very low price. Um, yeah, without people like that, um, I wouldn't be able to, um, yeah, to finance this hobby. Thank you to my patrons, to my channel members, and to all of you subscribers, and I hope you, hope you have a nice day.